In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at special matrices. By taking this class, you might already know different operations that can be performed on matrices, like the addition, the subtraction of matrices, the division, the multiplication, and different other operations that can be performed on matrices. For this tutorial, we are going to be considering all the special matrices that we have. And we'll be looking at very few examples on each and every one of them. So the first one, and I can say like the most commonest type of special matrix is the transpose matrix. So to explain transpose matrix, if you have an example of matrix A with its elements A11, A12, A21, and A22, and we interchange the rows and columns of this matrix to obtain a to obtain another matrix called b let me call this matrix b so if you interchange the rows and columns of matrix a to get matrix b we are going to have to so interchange the rows now we are going to have a 11 a 12 a 21 a 22 so we now have all these elements to become all these elements and also all these elements to become I I'll change it to another color there we have all these elements to have all these elements so we have successfully interchanged the rows and column of this matrix and reverse to matrix B as the transpose of matrix A so the transpose of matrix A is denoted as A superscript T. So if you have matrix A, the transpose is going to be A superscript T. So instead of writing B A, we can as well write A superscript T. So we get the transpose of a matrix by simply interchanging the rows and column of the matrix. Generally, If you have matrix A, which is an N by N matrix, we are going to have the transpose of the matrix, which is A superscript T, to be equal to an N by M matrix. So, for example, again, if I have matrix B, to be equal to a 2 by 3 matrix, that is 2 rows, 1. Two, three, four, negative two, one, and I'm to find the B transpose. I'm going to have the B transpose of this matrix to be equal to. So if matrix B is a two by three matrix, I'm expecting the B transpose to be a three by two matrix. So I'm going to have this to be interchanging rows and column now. So I have the first row, which now become the first column of the transpose. So I'm going to have one, two, three A. And also the second row which will become the second column and you have four negative two one a so i have a b and b transpose a so that's a quick overview of what the transpose of a matrix look like so the second special matrix i'm going to be looking at is the symmetric matrix Now, after establishing some kind of foundation with transpose of a matrix, so you are going to be laying on that foundation to get a symmetric matrix. If you consider a matrix A, which equals to a 2 by 2 matrix, and we have the element 2, minus 2, negative 2, and 1. So if you find the transpose of this matrix, we are going to have AT to be equal to. Now, the first row will become the first column. This is 3, negative 2. Second row row will become second column and I have here negative 2 and 1. If we study this matrix carefully, we are going to see that A is equal to A transpose. So here we have that A equal to A transpose. And whenever we have this case, it refers to this type of matrix as symmetric matrix. So 
So in fact, we have a matrix to be equal to its transpose. That type of matrix is referred to as a symmetric matrix. So the third special matrix that we're going to be looking at is the skew symmetric matrix. This look just like symmetric matrix, but just with one more condition. A skew symmetric matrix. Again, if we consider an example of matrix A, a three by three matrix, and then we have zero, negative two, three, two, zero, negative five. We have negative three, five, and zero. So from here, if I compute the transpose of this matrix, I'm going to have a transpose to be equal to the first row become the first column. So I have zero, negative two, three, two, zero, negative five. And the last row become the last column which is negative three, five, and zero. So if you study this matrix carefully and I decide to compute the negative of, my, of matrix A, so meaning that I'm multiplying all the elements of matrix A by negative one, I'm going to have zero multiplied by negative one, that's zero. Two multiplied by negative term one, I have two. Three multiplied by negative one, I have negative three. Again, for the second row, I'm going to have negative two, zero, five. So here I have three, negative five, and zero. So if you study these three matrices very well, we are going to see that negative A equal to A transpose. And whenever we have this condition, we refer to this matrix as a skew symmetric matrix. So simply, the matrix A is said to be skew symmetric if its transpose is equal to its negative. So the negative of matrix A is the transpose of matrix A, and that is as far as the skew symmetric matrix. So lastly, and with some other options, we're going to be looking at the square matrix. On that square matrix, we are going to be looking at different type of square matrix that we have also. And to explain the concept of square matrix, just like we know a square, the same length and the same breadth. So a matrix with equal number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. So if you have a matrix which is, if you have a matrix A, which is a M by N matrix, if this matrix A is a square matrix, so we know that M must be equal to N. So it can be, example, a two by two matrix, three by three matrix, seven by seven matrix, etc. So when I find the number of rows in a matrix is equal to the number of column, the type of matrix is referred to as a square matrix. So let's look at an example. If you have matrix A, which is a three by three matrix, and a I have a one one, a one two, a one three, a two one, a two two, a two three, a three one, a three two, and a three three. So this is square matrix, a three by three matrix. So on that square matrix, I said we are going to be looking at some sub examples of square matrix. If you look at this matrix, a one one. A22 and A33. A11, A22, A33. So all the elements that line that lies on this particular diagonal is referred to as the principal diagonal. And this is very important in drawing out the other examples of square matrix. But first thing that we need to take note of is that where the element A11, A22, and A33 lies is referred to as the principal diagonal. So depending on what happens with the principal diagonal, we're going to have other types of square matrices. And the first one I'm going to look at is the triangular matrix. So what is the condition for triangular matrix? If you have 
all the elements either above over here or below the dia of or below the principal diagonal so if you have any of these elements to be called zero either of them to be called zero refers to this as the triangular matrix so it can either be upper triangular or lower triangular we're going to be seeing that now but whenever we have all the elements above the principal diagonal to be called zero or all the elements below the principal diagonal to be called zero we're going to have a triangular matrix just to look at some examples let me scroll this up okay so we are looking at triangular matrix if you have an example of a 2 by 2 matrix 1 3 0 3 so we are we know that this is our principal diagonal so and we have all the elements below the principal diagonal to be called zero which is only one element in this case and this is a triangular matrix and also the same thing if you have a three by three matrix four zero zero five three zero one two three if you have this case again we know that this is our principal diagonal and here all the elements that lies above the principal diagonal equates to zero so here we have another triangular matrix so i mentioned you can either have upper triangular matrix or a lower triangular matrix and in the case where we have all the entries above the principal diagonal to be equal to zero so that is called the lower triangular matrix if you have all the elements above the principal diagonal in this case for example we have one zero zero two three zero four five six if you have this scenario this is a is our principal diagonal and all the elements above the principal diagonal equals to zero this equals to zero this is refers to as the lower triangular matrix As you can see, we have all the elements. It looks like a triangle right below this. It's like a triangle which falls to the lower end of the matrix. So this why this is referred to as the lower triangular matrix. And again, if you have all the and this is looking somehow weird. <laughs> again, if you have all the elements below the principal diagonal to be equal to zero in that case we are going to have an upper diagonal matrix upper triangular matrix for example if you have one two three we have zero here four five and again zero zero six in this scenario we have this to be our principal diagonal and all the elements that lies below the principal diagonal equals to zero so we are going to have this to be the upper triangular matrix as you can see we have the triangle at the upper end of the matrix so this is first was the the upper triangular matrix be able to see that okay So this is first as the upper triangular matrix. Also, another scenario for square matrices: if you have the elements along the principal diagonal to be equal and non-zero, and if the element to be zero, the matrix is called a scalar matrix. So this is what we refer to as scalar matrix. So if you have a square matrix and we have all the elements along the principal diagonal to be equal and non-zero and every other element to be called zero 
we're going to have a scalar matrix. For example, if you have a three by three matrix and we have all the elements along the principal diagonal to be equal to the same thing here, equal to two, and we have every other element to be equal to zero. So we call this the scalar matrix. So just know that whenever we have only the elements along the principal diagonal to be equal to the same thing here we have two 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 they must be equal to the same thing that's the first condition and they must not be equal to zero and the third condition is that every other element must be equal to zero in the matrix it refers to this as a scalar matrix and if in some other scenarios the scalar matrix is such that all the elements on the principal diagonal equals to one or unity such a scalar matrix is called a unit matrix so in the case where we have all the elements along the principal diagonal of a scalar matrix to be equal to one that is first was a unit matrix this is very important in vectors and other operations that involve matrices so if you have all the elements along the principal diagonal to be equal to one and every other element equal to zero so we call this the unit matrix and most of the time it's denoted with the letter i so this is simply the way unit matrix is being denoted so take note we have two scenarios here a scalar matrix and also a unit matrix unit matrix is a type of scalar matrix where all the elements in the principal diagonal are all equal to one but for scalar matrix it can be equal to anything other than one or zero and lastly we are going to be looking at the null matrix so the null matrix is not example of square matrix it stands on its own the null matrix and it's very simple to understand just as you can see null so whenever we have all the elements in the matrix to be zero such, ma such a matrix is called a null matrix for example if you have a two by two matrix and we have all the elements to be zero so this is a null matrix the same thing for a three by three matrix four by four five by five as much as we have all the elements in the matrix to be equal to zero we call this null matrix And that's it with the special matrices that we have. In this tutorial, we looked at transpose. We looked at the symmetric matrix. We look at the skew symmetric matrix. We also look at the square matrix. And lastly, we look at the null matrix. So under square matrix, we look at white and examples, or we can say type. So we considered the triangular matrix, both the upper triangular and the lower triangular. We also look at the scalar matrix and also the unit matrix so i hope you now understand different type of special ma special matrices that we have and how we can work with them and some of the applications in vectors and also linear algebra so thank you very much if you have any question you can drop it in the comment section below and if you find this tutorial useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up and kindly subscribe to the channel for more on this thank you and i'm going to see you in the next tutorial